cloud. When hello everyone, welcome. I am Ellie Windham, and I am the founder and program manager for Walking Other People's Shoes. I'm based out of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Walking Other People's Shoes strives to empower women of color voices through providing um, transformative experiences through storytelling and community. And we're happy that you could join us tonight uh, for a multicultural children's book club. This is a free virtual book club that is um, for children, parents, and educators, and who wants to have a deep dive on themed activities, concepts around race, identity, and culture. Additionally, we also share a themed activity and snack ideas. Um, I want to introduce you to two of our facilitators. However, our, our our activity facilitator is not here tonight. She's actually starting her semester at school. Um, and her name is Ruth Perez. And Ruth Perez, um, oh wait, I have her bio. Oh, da, 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 da. Ruth made us a video, so we're gonna yeah. share that. So yeah, Ruth um, is a activity coordinator and she's a sophomore. Um, actually, she's a junior, Never mind. she's, a junior now <laughs> at Lehman College, and she's pursuing bachelor's in speech pathology and audiology, followed with a master's in speech pathology. And these degrees will allow her to continue her work in schools, provide extra support to um, in speech to students with special needs, and she's based in the Bronx. And then our main facilitator is Mia Wenchen. And Mia Wenchen, if you don't know her, I hope you follow her. <laughs> but she um, parents on, uh, she blogs on parenting, children's books, and education at pragmaticmom.com. She's also the co-creator for Multicultural Children's Book Day and is a nonprofit celebrating diversity in children's books. She's based in the Boston area. So I'm going to hand it off to her to uh, introduce us the book of the month. Yay! Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming. I know this is a tricky week. Yay. You know, it's, kids are either back in school or about to go back to school, and it's Labor Day weekend. But first, I want to say congratulations to Ellie. Um, she hey, ran Ellie. A, a Kickstarter for Walking in Other People's Shoes with a $5,000, you know, either all or nothing. And she reached that goal, in fact, surpassed it. And so thank you to everyone who supported that because it helps um, support the program, the great program that they do. Um, and Ellie's about to run a marathon in Berlin. That will be uh, by the end of this month. Um, so anyway, this, to get to the book, I chose Lupe Lopez, Rockstar Rules. It's by E.E. E. Charlton Trujillo and Pat Zitlow Miller and illustrated by Joe Cepeda. And a lot of people might know Pat because um, she does a lot of children's books, a lot of picture books. Um, and Charlene Trujillo, maybe you might know her because she's well known in young adult books, but I, this is her first picture book. So it's kind of a really nice mm. collaboration with two authors. Um, and I picked it because um, it kind of, dovetails nicely. Uh, Lu uh, Lupe Lopez, it's a back to school story. Um, but then also uh, with mid kind of hitting right in mid-September, we have um, um, Hispanic Heritage Month. And so this is, you know, a lot of times, you know, um, it's a whole argument of like, why are all the books about, you know, this, you know, this particular minority group about, you know, their trauma or about, you know, issues that relate to their culture. Why can't they just be normal kids doing normal things who just happen to be of that, you know, uh, minority or ethnicity. Um, and so it's nice to see more what we call, I would just call it like Latina joy. So it's just like, you know what, the character could be anybody, you know, it could be a white boy, it could be a, a black girl, it could be, you know, it could be anybody, just happens to be uh, Lupe Lopez who happens to be Latinx doing, normal things, everyday normal things, but clearly has a big personality. Um, and so I just thought it was fun and we kind of get, you know, get a lot of things checked off, back to school, 
you know, rules, you know, music, and, you know, celebrate some, you know, subtly uh, Latino, um, Hispanic uh, culture. And so, um, yeah, and also a debut picture book, always, you know, a celebration, because I feel like every book that gets published um, is, it's not like birthing a baby. So it, especially when it's your first picture book, I feel like it's super special. Um, and this is a, um, I think the, I think the author, I think the publisher is um, Candlewood Press. Uh, so I'm giving away this copy, which happens to be an advanced release copy. So it will be slightly different. I think it's actually like a folded and gathered. Um, so it's like one of those hot off the presses. Um, and this one happens to be bound already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read part of the book, because as always, we don't want to violate any kind of copyright. Um, and this is a kind of story too, where, um, I mean, it's sort of like, it's hard to skip skip some pages because it's definitely like, the, it's, oh, a, yeah. it's a, yeah, it's a true story where stuff is happening and it's building, the plot is building. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is, and, 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 and for a picture book actually, it has, it has you know, quite a few words. So I'm gonna read sort of mm. the beginning and then you know, I'll let you guys guess about the middle or I'll give you a clue and then I'll read the ending. Um, and then I'll, then I'll, then I'll share the snack. Okay. So just so you can see the illustrations, Josephina, who also is, um, Latinx. So it's really a great, you know, collaboration. Lupe Lopez had big plans for the first day of kindergarten. She practiced drumming all summer. And now she was a real life Texas sized rock star. As anyone could see. She strutted through the doors of Hector P. Garcia Elementary School, shiny sunglasses covering her eyes. Her mother's classic lunchbox bouncing at her side. And two banged up, taped up number two pencils poking out of her pocket, ready to drum at any time. On anything, desks, tables, chairs, the Texas map on her classroom wall. She's a drummer, she's mm -hmm. a rock star. But then, uh-oh, Lupe Lopez, says Miss Quintanilla, take off those sunglasses, Lupe grinned, and rolled out another solo on her classmates' desks. Rat, rat a tap, tap, boom, tick a bam. But I'm a rock star. Lupe was the first kid to get in trouble on the first day of kindergarten, mm. which, to be honest, was kind of a big deal. Yeah. We all have to follow rules, Miss Quintanilla said, especially in school. Rock stars don't follow rules, Lupe said. Yes, they do, said her teacher. And she listed three rules for being, for being a school rock star. Number one, listen to your teacher. Number two, use your inside voice. Number three, be a friend. And Lupe's, think, Lupe's thinking, listen to your teacher. I did except once and use your inside voice. She's thinking rock and roll is my inside voice. And for being a friend, she said, I'm a solo act. No more sunglasses, no more trouble. Miss Quintanilla said, understand? Lupe tapped her fingertips against her hips, nodded her head and said, cool. Which was a rock star way of saying, She'd think about it. But Lupe thought Miss Quintanilla had her rules wrong. Lupe knew rock stars, one, didn't listen to anyone. Two, made lots of noise, rat a pan. Three, had friends, had fans, not friends. Mm -hmm. When Miss Quintanilla asked Lupe to stop drumming and put her pencils away, Lupe, Lupe followed her first rule and didn't listen. Ooh. And so, um, as you can see, Lupe um, is following her own rules, and 
you know, her classmates are a little bit shocked. And, you know, there's consequences when you don't follow the rules. And you know, the first day of school, it's really important for the teacher to establish the rules. Um, and so Lupe is just kind of trying her thing um, trying to find fans, not friends. And, you know, things aren't, things are not going that well for her on her first day of school. Okay, so she goes home and she comes back and here we are. The next day, Lupe brought her lunch in a paper bag, put a plain pencil behind her ear, shut her sunglasses in her desk and tried to follow Miss Keithania's rules. Very serious. She looks sad, right? She listened yeah. politely, used her inside voice, tried to be a friend, and didn't drum on anything at oh, all. Yay. It was the worst morning a kindergartner ever had at Hector P. Garcia Elementary, as <laughs> anyone could see. At lunch, Lupe tapped a tiny beat with her fingers, barely loud enough to hear. That's when Ruby De Leon and Anna Flores sat beside her. We love your drumming, said Ruby. You're kind of a big deal, said Anna. Really, Lupe said, you can be my first fans. Ruby shook her head. We don't wanna be fans. We wanna start a band. I play guitar and Anna sings. So these are her new posse. Mm -hmm. Lupe hadn't considered being in a band. Cool, she said, which was a rock star way of saying she'd think about it. We can rock, insisted Ruby. And I can roll, said Lupe. Maybe, thought Lupe. Friends are better than fans. The next morning, Lupe, Ruby, and Anna strutted through the doors of Hector P. Garcia Elementary. Pencils and guitar picks waiting in their lunch boxes, sunglasses dangling from their shirts, ready to be famous after school, because even rock stars follow the rules. Sometimes. So anyway, that's fun, isn't it? That's fun. Um, yeah, and I, I think it was just out. I think it's um, fresh off the presses. So for my giveaway, uh, I found has, finally it, a Mercado. Mia, yes, Mia. It had it had a thread through it in terms of sticking with the culture. One one example was having the school named after in Hispanic. You know, so the they don't drop the culture in, in the whole story. They add to it as she goes through. That's she a great point. point. Yeah. Yeah. She's That's pointed. a great point. Like even from the teacher as well. Right. right. Um, so I'm just gonna go over my giveaway really quickly. I found a, a Latino market one town over and I picked out things that I thought I would like to eat myself. And these are from Marinella Patisetas, butter flavored cookies. So these look like butter cookies. They look delicious. Mm -hmm. And then I got these cookies. Um, Principe sandwich cookies with lime filling. Um, and then I got these snacks. Um, they're uh, picosones. Nice. They're chicharrones de harina. So they're kind of like, I think that like a chicharron, like a, like a fried skin, but actually made out of corn um, mm. with a chili lime flavor. Um, I got one for myself. I thought that was good. And then the thing I just discovered, because we have a new empanada store in our town, and they have this Alpha Forges, and these are the most delicious things <laughs> I have ever had in my life. Um, so it's like a cookie, and then in the middle, they use a dolce de leche so it's kind of like a caramelly kind of um mm -hmm. middle with chocolate and then they dip the whole cookie into chocolate as well and it's like crunchy and chocolatey and gooey and it is like 
if like if you like a s'more, this is like a s'more and steroid, like a very sophisticated s'more. So I got um, a whole box of these. This is like, yeah, this is what you want to win. Like you can't <laughs> wait. Like you can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I only got one. I only got one. So I'm, I'm giving oh, it away, but I can buy more from my, from my, um, from my, um, the, the back over there the um, so now we are going to go into the uh, activity portion and I am just going to share my screen and pull up, um, the video that Ruth made for us. And, um, this was the first time Ruth made it. We're, she's using the software called Loom. So uh, we, we can only really see a, her in the corner. So, you know, don't mind that. Just like listen to what she's saying, I guess. We'll kind of treat it like audio um, while we have her figure out, you know, how to center herself. So anyway, I'll just, I'll just start playing it. Hello, everyone. This is Russ the activity facilitator for our multicultural children's book club um, here in celebration of Black X slash Hispanic Heritage Month for the month of September. Yay. Um, I'm unfortunately not able to join y'all today, but I'm here in recording to guide you through our activity. So I hope that you all enjoy the book Lupe Lopez, Rockstar Rules. I know that I loved it. I enjoyed it. Um, I know that it's something many other kids will love. I know that growing up, I didn't have these books around. Uh, there just wasn't enough re representation for the Latinx community here in the United States. So I'm glad to see that this is out there. And it's exciting and it's thrilling. It doesn't matter if you're not Latino, Latina, um, I think everyone can learn from it and enjoy it. And that's what's so wonderful about it. It's inclusive to all. So that's why I'm excited. I think that this book is not only for children, it's for adults. What is this? So let's get into our activity. Well, first, you're going to need to go and get some of our handy dancing materials. First, we have some crayons or color pencils or markers, whatever you have. Just give you a little pop of color. We're going to be doing some drawing today. Then we're going to need handy dandy white paper or construction paper. Just some empty surface where you can draw it. And then a pen or a pencil. So, just gonna give you guys a few seconds or a minute. I'm gonna give you guys a minute to go ahead and get your materials. And once you have your materials, please give us a thumbs up or a yes, I've got it in the chat. Alrighty, so now that everyone has their materials, we are going to start our activity. There are three components to this activity based on book. So our main character is Lupe Lopez. She goes to what I believe are three things, right? We know that Lupe Lopez, she wants to be a drummer. She brings her number two pencils to the classroom, to school, she's banging on everything. She's drumming. This is this girl's dream. That's her passion. But then something happens. Number two, there's an obstacle. Her teacher, for understandable reasons, does not allow her to drum inside of the classroom. And then there are classmates that do not come and support the brain. So Looks like her passion, her dreams are being crushed. Pretty sad and upsetting, but there's something amazing I love about this book. At the end, we get to see that Lupe Lopez overcame it 
And that was thanks to the help of her friends who provided her with some moral support and they formed the band. I think that's an amazing ending. But I think it's something that we can apply to our lives, those three things. What is one thing that we wanted to do? One obstacle that we encountered on the way there? And then how we overcame it. Yeah. So now I want us all to grab our paper or construction paper, whatever you have lying around. We're going to hold this as the three parts. See that. Now everyone should have their tribe pulled. Please do not mind the line through the middle. Here we're using paper here. Um, so our first part is I want everyone to think what is one thing we want to do? I wish it, it could be a goal, something in your career. Something in school, educationally, something relationship wise, the whole range of things. So I just want you to think for one second what is one thing that you want to do? For me, I knew that when I was in high school, I wanted to go to college and I wanted to pursue a bachelor's. I wasn't sure what. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it. I just knew that I had to because that was what was expected of me and is what would provide me the best chances to succeed, to have economic stability. So it was a lot of pressure to me mentally, but that was one goal that I have in my mind. Okay, we have to go to college, we have to get in. So now, let me maybe have some ideas coming in or have one scenario in your mind. In the first part of the tribal, I want you to go ahead and draw it out. Draw the scenario. What do you remember from it? Maybe some things or some words that came up into your mind. Maybe you were really excited or maybe you were really nervous or you were really anxious. Go ahead, draw it out. Put some little thought bubbles in there, some words popping out. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and share what I shared in my first part. And we told you guys, my first goal was to get into college. That was the one thing I had my mind put on. So right here, I have the green chalkboard that we would have in my classroom when we were talking about college or schools. Then here is 17-year-old Ruth sitting down at her desk and telling myself, I can't do this or I'm not ready for this. And then all of those other um, things, the things where I had like, I have to do this. This is gonna bring me ahead. Okay. So now I want you guys to just take a moment to go ahead and share what, what is, what, what was one of your goals or one thing that you really wanted to do? Go ahead and show your drawing as well. Alrighty, now, I already mentioned what is one obstacle, as I told you. My obstacle was all of those negative, pessimistic thoughts that were coming into my head, my anxiety when I was in high school. 
I dealt with a lot of mental health problems and anxiety. My anxiety was through the roof. And that's something that really stuffed me for a while. I thought, you know what, I'm not not going to go to college. I don't know where to start or what to do. I felt like I didn't have any guidance. That I was the only one in the world going through this. But it was something that a lot of people were going through. A lot of students in high school were also first-generation students were going through. And I didn't know. So now we're just going to take a few moments and we're going to draw out our scenario for our obstacle. Alrighty. Now, everyone, we done or close to done. Going in their second box. So I'm going to go ahead and share mine. Here I have the thought bubble where I just put thoughts and doubts. That was my obstacle. My obstacle was myself. Um, the next tab here, you're not good enough. You'll never get into college. So it's just something that were constantly going through my mind during this time period. So I want you guys now to take this time, just go ahead and share all your scenarios over something that you drew out, maybe some thoughts that you thought were coming into your head um, while you were going through this obstacle. Alrighty, now it is time to share our third portion of our trifold, how you overcame your obstacle to achieve your goal. Um, so for me, I am a person of, a person of faith. Um, and I strongly rely on my relationship with God and people, my faith, community that surround me, that love me, that provide me support, my family, my friends. And there's this one, I will burst, and it says, kind of like an anxiety of fear, but the power of love is down mine. And so David, I read that. I was like, you know what? You're right. Why am I so anxious? Why am I allowing myself to treat myself horribly in the way that I think? I was just being a bully to myself. I was my worst enemy. And thankfully, as I said, I had so many people surrounding me, my friends, my, my mother. She is my number one fan. When we've been looking for fans, I have my fan, my mama, to really provide me that support to tell me who can't do this. Um, and thankfully now I'm in my third year of college pursuing my bachelor's mm -hmm. in psychology and audiology mm -hmm. um, to help children with special needs. And I just think, well, what would have happened if I just let the obstacle stay there and decided not to overcome it? I wouldn't be where I am right now. I'm so happy to be where I am. I think that everything that we go through in life makes us a bigger and better person. Uh, I think that's so beautiful. So that is the end of activity. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for partaking. Um, I hope that you have a, had a wonderful time and enjoyed it. I have a wonderful night, everyone. And I hope that you have fun with your Q&A, your questions. OK, so I, I don't think I wasn't able to spotlight people. Because when I screen share, I think like that's the only thing that I can show. So why don't we just spend uh, a few minutes? Because we have a few minutes more before uh, Pat and um, our other author are here. So why don't we? If, if anyone wants to share um, their drawing, why don't why don't I? Let's see. Let me unmute Ellie. Do you want to share yours? Unmute and let me also. <laughs> my my. My drawing is not like great, but it's great to me because of stick figures. But my dream is being an author one day. <laughs> so um, 
there's me. There's the book that I hope to write. <laughs> so that's part of my dream. It's not what I'm, I guess my overcoming is procrastination. <laughs> so that's my that's awesome goal. Um, but from attending all these book clubs, it's been very motivating to, you know, start drop, you know, start doing like some right. thoughts exactly. on paper. So, right. and, and, and this is a great start by just doing a simple picture and then like a word. I'll be, I'm going to put like my dream on this side of the paper. And then I draw mm -hmm. a image that, that matches to that, to that right. word and that phrase. So this is my little, my, my book, my picture book that I'm making for myself. So it's like, you know, I, I, I do that for each, each time I do it in my journal. Nice. Well, that's lovely. Did you do three boxes, Ellie, or did you just do one? I only did one. Oh, no, that's okay. I, we didn't stop because I wasn't quite sure how that worked. Does anyone else want to um, share? I, I'll, I'll spotlight you. How about the GM family? Anyone? Do any, do any of Leanna's kids are interested in sharing? Um, you're muted, so you just might wanna, here I unmuted you. Oh, do you want to tell us? Are you are you muted? No, I think the audio is not working. Oh, okay. Oh, no problem. That looks great. Your drawing looks great. Anyone else interested? Barbara or Danielle or Rashika? Sure, I can. Yay. Okay. Let me, um, okay. uh, can you I'm not sure if you can see it, but this, I drew a little, uh, drawing of my con I used to do a lot of drawing competitions since my childhood. And I was back as a child, I was very scared because I always feared of competition. And there were lots of kids around me who drew equally good. So I wanted to do something really crazy, just like the storybook that we read. And so I drew a red big bus and the kids were going on a picnic and they all were carrying their luggage on top of the bus. So I wanted to do something crazy mm. to give me a prize. And uh, <laughs> now I know it was so silly, uh, but now, yeah, I, so, uh, yeah, so now I am a preschool teacher and I really see these crazy things in the kids. So I really want to be a good preschool teacher. That's my goal now, a fresh goal. As a child, the goal was to get awards and <laughs> now I wish to be a good teacher. That's my fresh goal. That's fantastic. I'm sure you are a great teacher. And sounds like you're going to encourage like young artists, which is fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, does anyone else want to share? Because now we have both of our authors. So um, I can spotlight them. Barbara, did you want to share? My pictures are not so good. <laughs> and my, oh, I'll just tell you. There's what no I judgment have. zone. Okay, I started out with what I always wanted to do was be a mother and have children, beautiful children. So I kind of drew a picture of a mother and a little child. And then I went on to uh, wanting to make sure the obstacles were not in their way and things that I had to do in terms of doing it yourself, you know, sort of step out in front and make sure people understood where we were going and where we were not going. So I have just listed those. And I also um, talked about support from my family, you know, like the grandparent, aunt and all that kind of stuff. And how I made sure we got to see them, you know, so that they'd get some positive feedback from them. So that's all I did. Well, I would say it's not just like 
it's not a little thing because here Barbara is, you know, growing up pre civil rights, going to college in Boston and raising kids and, um, you know, predominantly white neighborhoods. And her daughter has a PhD from Stanford. Um, Barbara has a PhD <laughs> from uh, Claremont McKenna. Her son has a law degree, which he got a full ride scholarship. And yeah, that's no little thing, I would say. But um, thank you. Thank you. So why don't I now um, introduce the in guest. our two guests and maybe they can introduce themselves and tell us about kind of, cause I, I mean, I know, um, Pat is just like a famous, you know, children's book author with a lot of uh, titles and picture books. And um, E.E., mm -hmm. e. is, is that how she goes by, E.E.? E. Yes. Yeah, um, I, I understand this is her debut, but she's also very well known in the YA sphere. And so I thought, what an interesting collaboration. Um, and so I would love to learn more about how this book came together, how you guys came together to write it. And uh, like, like, yeah, please tell us your, uh, your, the picture book back, the, the story behind the story. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Is, is E there or did they step away for a e, minute? E, e can't uh, hear. Yeah. I think she's having audio trouble. Oh, um, do we want to try to get that fixed yeah. or should I talk first um, or what should we do? She's, she's, here but just uh does she want to leave and come back would that help with a tech issue because she's yeah, i mean maybe. she's literally here um you know what i mean like i see her image and all of that um i don't know what the audio issue is i'm not actually that good at zoom i i the, the only oh yeah she's going to there, oh, yeah, she's going to log out and log back, back in. Back in. Yeah. Okay. That, so maybe just give them a minute to do that. Yeah, just that. like that, you know, like that. That's my tech here for all. Just like shut yeah, down that phone and start it. <laughs> restart that computer. If that doesn't work, right. I'll next, my next, next. <laughs> I love your background. I know. He, he made them. So, you know, um, yeah, I thought it, they turned out really, really cool. <laughs> I was like, I'm really impressed. You're like the first authors to have the, these amazing backgrounds. <laughs> Sound check for EE. Sound I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So oh, I was cool. just asking. Um, I thought it was so interesting because Pat is, you know, very famous in this, in our world of picture books, having yeah. lots and lots of titles and being just a very well known, popular. Um, and I, you're very well known in the YA sphere. Um, and I understand this is your debut picture book. And so I was just wondering the story behind the story. How did you guys come to work together? What made you decide to write a picture book? How did you come up with your idea? How did you work together? Yeah. And all of that and, and everything okay. else. <laughs> and, just, and, and you only get, you get 30 seconds, Pat, to explain it all. for you guys. We need to start out with you telling the story of your kindergarten experience that led to this book. So it all started when he showed up for kindergarten. Yeah, so um, I showed up to kindergarten in this little town called Mathis, Texas, population 5,000 people, right? And um, I show up and I've got this giant KISS belt buckle, like the band, rock star KISS, you know? So I had this KISS belt buckle, I had this KISS t-shirt, had this KISS necklace. Again, politically, I didn't know anything about KISS. I was in kindergarten. And um, so at the time I had this KISS metal lunchbox. And I would, I was just like, I wanted to be the drummer for Kiss so bad. Like, and so I was strutting through kindergarten on the first day of school with this whole like decked out band paraphernalia and these aviator reflecting sunglasses. And the teacher calls out my full name. And you know, when you're at home, you're always in trouble when that happens. And so she calls out my full name and she says, I turn around and she says, take off those sunglasses right now. And I just looked at her and said, I can't do it. I'm a rock star. And it was like, <laughs> boom, I got sent to the office on the first day of kindergarten. And it was, you know, defending my case about, you know, the fact that I, I needed to be this. And so, but from that experience, you know, I, I told that story just a few times before, not, not that often, but people kept saying, that's really, there's something there. There's something there. 
So I, I, I had sat down and I had started sketching out what I thought would be a picture book after um, doing a lot of studying of the craft on my own, thanks to Pat really kind of guiding me initially about what to read. And then I said, hey, listen, I think you should write this book with me. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm a solo act. Okay, so, <laughs> not really. But. but go ahead, tell tell them what happens next, and then we'll move on. Wait, so and in, how do you guys? Wait, how did what what? How did you guys know each other? Are you both from Texas? Um, or how do you no, guys? No, no. Um, I live in Wisconsin. <laughs> have my entire life. We met through a mutual friend. Yep. Um, and that's actually kind of a, a funny story too, because I was sitting with this this friend at a, a writing conference that E was not at, and my friend was texting E. And I, you know, heard about E and read their books and was was impressed. And so I said something along the lines of, you can just text E. E. Charlton Trujillo whenever you want. And I was like, kind of like in awe. Um, and then E was coming through Madison um, on a, a tour she was doing for a documentary she was making yep. and needed a place to stay and ended up staying at my house before we had ever met. And um, after she spent the night at my house, we became friends. And now I can text E. E. Charlton Trujillo whenever I want. So <laughs> that's how we became friends. I and mean then, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and look, you know, when people meet us, we were talking about this the other day in a different discussion is that, you know, uh, we look very different when you meet us as people, right? When you see us, like, you know, our hair is different, you know, she is white, I'm Mexican American, you know, I have tattoos, I don't believe Pat has any. And yeah. there's just ways in which on the outside, we would look like very different people. And we wouldn't be the kind of people that you would put together to collaborate on average. But that's the best thing about meeting with young people. And especially when we're talking about loopy and other forms of writing and story is it is it is to is if you look here and make the assessment, you, and you stop there, you're missing everything else, right? And so the fact that we can have a connection, a, a deep friendship and and write together, you know, um, you know, it's a way of almost like symbolically saying when we're standing there with young people that, you know, you can look different, you can come from different backgrounds and you can still find a way in, right? And and, and be in conversation. And and so in some in some instances when we're standing beside each other, I mean, it's it's like some sort of like 80s film where we're on the cover and it's like, you know, this was the bad, you know, the bad kid in school. And this was the kid who got all A's, you know, but, you know, deep down inside, I mean, I got A's too. People just didn't think so. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, you know, and but but Pat, t tell a little bit about the process of what we did once we started working together. Well, yeah. so I have a question here because like, um, I mean, E is obviously a fantastic writer and maybe picture book genre is new to her, but r craft writing is certainly not an issue for her. Yeah. So, so Pat, I'm wondering at one point, were you thinking like, uh, like, I'm just going to say like, you can do it on your own. Cause like you can climb that mountain versus like, okay, I'll help you. Um, yeah. or I'll help you, but I don't really need my name attached or I'll help <laughs> you. Like, like what was the whole, what was going through your head as you're sort of mentoring her in the this picture book? Mm. Yeah. Well, well, initially I, I was like, well, I don't think you do need me because because he had sent me sort of a, a rough draft, uh, a first draft of the story. And I'm like, you know, you can do this. You know, it's your story. You know, you don't necessarily need me. And then they made a pretty convincing case, but, but you know, that we could do this together and it would be fun. And, you know, that, that I would bring something to it. And so we started just sending the manuscript back and forth, you know, where I would make some changes and send it over and even make some changes and send it back. And then we probably both sigh deeply. And cause you know, I mean, <laughs> when you collaborate, you've got to like take the other person's style into account, you know, and, and Ian and I are both like very good writers, but we do have a different sort of style. Right. Um, and, you know, he's used to writing middle grade and YA where you can like, you know, spend a lot more words on something. And, you know, my goal as picture book is always shorter, tighter, fewer words, you know, you don't need that. And so we went back and forth a lot about what the book really needed. You know, right. she, she, you would send it back and they'd say, you know, I added some words and I'd be like, no, you did not. <laughs> so but but had, then in yeah. fairness, there were times that actually we did yeah. need to add words or we needed different words because, you know, whether it's for cultural authenticity, whether it's for the richness of the narrative and sometimes it's, and Pat will jump on this, is that you gotta have the right word. You know, yeah. it has to be the right word. It, if you get lazy, then it, then it's like, well, it's too easy. And so I do think that, you know, there was a lot of growing in this process, but now that we're, you know, we're going to be four books in when it's all said and done um, as collaborating together. And, and that kind of process, you know, I don't feel like I did maybe is intimidated when I first started. Now I feel like I'm an equal partner completely. You know? Tessa, so is, it, is, it, 
Is it four books that are uh, Lupe Lopez series or just uh, all different? There's two. There's a follow up to this Lupe that comes out next year called Lupe Lopez Reading Rockstar, where Lupe learns to read and runs into some unexpected difficulties. And then we've got two books um, that are not Lupe. One is called A Girl Can Build Anything. And it's more like a, a lyrical picture book um, about girls and their ability to build things. And then there'll be a follow up to that that doesn't have a formal title yet. No, that's what I, I was actually noticing it like in the first page, like the spread that I read, you know, it was a lot of text for a nope. picture book, like, but no, nope. but definitely so interesting and really like set the scene and like established like who she was with all these like great details. But then the next page, it was like on anything, desk, tables, chairs, I and mean, it was, you know, very more picture app book esque, you know, right. and, but I didn't really notice like, like, oh, that's pat or oh that's e i just thought like oh it's interesting the book has a different rhythm as you go from page to page but it sort of made it really interesting because usually picture books the word count per spread is more consistent but yeah. I, I i actually liked how you didn't really know what you're getting when you turn each page and it was kind of a surprise but it, it all it all worked you know yeah, I mean, that was our goal to have a story that we both felt good about that we both felt like it it really, really worked. Um, and so yeah, it was it was fun and it was educational. Um, and it was unlike anything I'd ever done before, the collaboration end of it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see a lot of picture book collaboration uh, that isn't author illustrator. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, I know Liz Garton Scanlon and Audrey Vernick have done a couple, but I don't know of, of too many other people who have done the collaboration end of things. But what then did we you bring something to you it. propose this? Like, was that sort of like, oh yes, definitely, you know, like more the yeah. merrier in terms of picture book, or they were kind of like, Pat, uh, you know, Pat, like you, you, know, you should be working on your own stuff, you know? I, I'm sorry, you know? I missed the first part of your question. Oh, like, how did your agents feel about like, oh, oh we're going to collaborate on picture books? You know, like, I'm just going to write a bunch with E and, you know, maybe your agent's like, uh, Pat, there's a lot of, you know, publishers that are, they want like your books as well, like, uh, you know, or versus like, you know, um, like what, like collaborate on a picture book on the authors, like, like we're cutting the pie, like very small here, yeah. you know? I mean, it helped that we both have agents that are part of the same agency. We don't have the same agent, but they're both with Aaron Murphy Literary. And so they know each other and they, like, I know E's agent, you know, is my agent. Um, I think they were more surprised than anything else. And then when they saw the story, they were like, oh, and they got really excited. I don't know, what do you want to add, e? No, I, I don't think there was, I, I think it's exactly what Pat said. And also, um, I think there's a real understanding that whenever I'm going to sit down and do a project, I'm going to be super committed and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to slack off. I'm going to do the work, whether it's read 20 books or a hundred picture books. And, and in the end, I did read a lot of picture books because I wanted to study the craft and understand it because you don't want someone else to feel like they're ever carrying you through that process. You want to show up and be an equal partner. And I think, I think that's what I learned through this is that, you know, that we each bring our strengths to the table, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. And it's also, um, we get to create a character that's dynamic, that is a young woman who is strong, and confident and assured of herself, and that she gets to be brown, and that the kids in her classes get to be brown. And that's a beautiful and okay thing. And you know? the teacher. Yes, and the teacher. Is. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. In Texas. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Right. You know, he grew up in Texas and we actually did some research um, and shared the information with Josepita, the illustrator. We, I went and did some Googling about what is the racial makeup of kids, you know, in elementary school in Texas. And we got the percentages of what percent are Hispanic, what percent are African-American, what percent are white, what percent are Asian, you know. And and Joe went through when he drew like the, the lunchroom scenes and the playground scenes, he really tried to stick very close to those actual percentages so the school would be realistically portrayed. Which is also based on location too. Obviously Texas is a huge state, you know, and it, it definitely takes a day to drive through it depending on which end you get on. So it depends on where you are, but it was important kind of based on where we were thinking it was set. It's like, let's have cultural authenticity to the region and let's represent those kids and let them see themselves on the page, you know? Mm -hmm. It was no mistake that we said it that in Hector P. Garcia Elementary, that was a very conscious choice that we made, you know? And you had a teacher whose name really was Ms. Quintanilla. And so um, it was a nod to your former teacher as well. And to Selena, the goddess. Yes. Was um, this whole like Latino, Latinx joy, was that ever crossing your mind of like, like let's have a scenario where it's not, you know, it's not, you know, something traumatic happening to the character or just like anyone could be in the situation, 
but how cool she just happens to be a young Latina girl. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean I see that trend now. And uh, I think when picture books got more woke and we mm -hmm. saw more characters mm -hmm. of color, we were seeing more of like, you know, it was like almost like a stare, like every Japanese American was in yeah. a German camp and every African American <laughs> was marching for civil rights. And mm -hmm. so there was sort of an outcry. So was that something conscious or just like, uh, like we want to see more just joy in Latina or was just like, ah, that's just the story and just, that's just what worked, you know? I mean, I think on some level, I mean, it's, 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 it goes both ways. You know, there is a conscious choice because we get into that, that trap of, it was interesting when you just said trend, I would like it not to have to be quote a trend, right? To have black boy joy or Latina or Latinx joy. I would like it to just be the norm. That, that, right. That's just the norm, you know, it's not a marketing idea or that. And I think when we were approaching this, we wanted this to be a joyful book, uh, a book of learning, a book of growing. And um, also the other thing Pat will jump in and say is, is that when we meet with young people, even though Loopy is brown, it's not a limitation, right? You know, often there, there's that stereotype, right? That, right? that, you know, that they have about, you know, that, that like white children won't read brown or black books or so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And and I we've seen pictures of young white girls, of, of brown girls, of black girls holding that book or emulating Loopy. Dressed up like Loopy. Like Loopy and, yeah. and taking on that and that idea that they feel the strength in them. And that's yeah. really powerful. And we tell the kids, we, what does it we say to them when we meet them? We say everybody's a rock star. You you might yeah. not be into music at all, but you're a rock star in other ways. You know, there's something you're yeah. good at. There's something that makes you unique and yourself. Yes. That you need to embrace yeah. and you know um, bring forth in your life. Yeah. Well, um, I want to make sure we have time for questions. Does anyone want to ask uh, our authors a question? I I just want to say thank you. This is Barbara, the little old lady. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> you, you little young lady. Little, little old black lady. I was <laughs> going to tell you how important it is that you added a, a, yet another book, you know, that shows black and white kids as equally potential or equally, you know, um, creative and talented because there are so few. I mean, there are just so few books particularly where black kids see themselves doing anything other than the script, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I think it's terrific. And I just want to thank you both. Thank and you. Ask you to do some more. We're going to try it. We're That's not enough, it. ladies. You got you to gotta get cracking. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You do well. So you got to get busy. We need them. We need you. <laughs> really, it's terrific. Anyone else want to ask anything? My question. Oh, I have a question. So yeah. what is what okay. was your like childhood dream when you guys, you know, were elementary school? I mean, you were you want to obviously want to be a rock star, but oh, that, what did you <laughs> did you have it in your childhood a, dream? A really good question. When I was four, so this was before, you know, school. I was watching the electric company, which you have to be a certain age oh, to remember yeah. what the electric company actually is, but it was a, a children's mm -hmm. show. And for some reason they were doing like alphabet things and it came to G and G was a go-go dancer. And I remember saying to my mom, I want to be a go-go dancer. And my oh mom my said, gosh. Um, <laughs> so that's the first thing I remember saying I want to be in then, you know, in grade school, I'm not sure I knew. Um, I was not, we've told the story before, I was not like Ian Kindergarten. I didn't swagger in full of, you know, myself. Yeah, I kind yeah. of like snuck in and sat in the back. Um, okay. And I got into trouble once in kindergarten because I didn't drink my milk fast enough at snack time and they called my mom. Um, oh, you know, geez. looking back, I'm thinking like, I could have done a lot worse than that drink my milk fast enough. Right. But you were in Wisconsin. I mean, that's a crime in Wisconsin. <laughs> that's oh, true. Yeah. true. Very state. <laughs> Yeah, so it took me more like in the middle school before I started going, yeah, I think I want to be a writer. Um, oh, it took me a little longer to figure that out. I mean, and, I, you know, aside from my my dreams of being the drummer of Kiss, you know, um, you know, when I was four, like Pat was saying at the age of four, it was like I, I wanted, you know, I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to win an Oscar and I wanted to be the drummer for Kiss. Those were my like goals at four. And, oh. you know, I ended up getting to be the writer. I ended up getting to be a filmmaker and I get it, you know, and I still drum. So it's like, you know, I get to kind of have all of those pieces and then share those, 
those you know parts when I meet young people, you know. So that's right. Cool. Will you right. give us a little pencil drum, you know, performance? Yeah. I mean, I would, but I didn't bring my. I actually have pencil drumsticks. I just don't have them on me right now. Oh, so oh not even you know? number two pencils. No number two pencils. No <laughs> number two pencils. You caught me pen non pencil oh, handed. I know. If you ever want to make us a video, we'll attach. I, I will. It's, yeah. it's like gonna happen. Video. Uh, I, I will want, TikTok it. We need I it. Like, another, oh, yeah, yeah. Give us. A I have another question. Yes, ma'am. That is, what? How do the kids respond to the book? Oh, tell them that it's amazing. Well, you know, we we we've read it out loud a couple times um, mm -hmm. in person, and then occasionally with me in one place and and e zooming in from from elsewhere, you know, and Thank they you. they get into it. Yeah, I mean, they usually I read the narrative and then e chimes in as the voice of Lupe um, with a uh -huh. lot of her, and so that makes it kind of fun. And yeah, it's been really great. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> right. you know they want to drum, they want to say right. that a plan. They really, it's like there's a lot of energy, and of course right. when Pat and I read it together. You know, Pat's very leveled. She she just reads oh. all the in between and she's the teacher. She's really great. And then I get to be the, you know, the loopy kind of like, right. you know, a little bit of bratty, you know, a little bit when sometimes. But yeah, yeah it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, loopy, loopy. yeah is, but yeah. but yeah, no, it's it's been really great to see kids and it's been all kinds of kids. And um I, I had an opportunity to visit with some some children in San Antonio um who um have some developmental disabilities and oh, okay. We met with them over the summer. It was myself and someone else. And, and you know, I, I had never read the book out loud and I'm reading the book out loud to them. And just to watch that look and there were photos taken and just to see them pulled in. And it was like magic to me. It was like, I could have been there all day to be part of that because, and you know, and from that they could come up with stories of their own. And that's what I really love is when they start thinking about themselves and the kind of stories they can tell, because that's, that's when the book does the work for me is when the young right. people feel like yeah. they can tell their stories, you know? Everyone can be the star of their own story. That's so absolutely. absolutely. Well, we are coming up. Actually, we're a little bit over eight o'clock. Okay. So I just want to be mindful of the time. Sure. Well, thank you both so much for coming. Yeah. And yes. Everything. Yes. Fantastic. And I just want to uh, just let you know for our next month, Ooh. we'll be using Layla and the Witchy Cake Off by Flavia Z. Drago, also by Candlewood Press, because I actually, I, they're in my town and I love them. So <laughs> um, when I had like when I was doing the schedule and I was like kind of with press I have some openings and I want these kinds of books and so I was like I was like for September I need something that celebrates you know Hispanic heritage I need something that's kind of Halloweeny and they were like oh we got you know we got we got all kinds of oh, we got you <laughs> yeah so they, they, they totally hooked me up so I'm looking forward to this one um and mm -hmm. so I hope you guys can come back next month we'll be um I'm giving away also inter candy from all over the world i've been wow. collecting at my middle mm. eastern store my greek store my japanese store my korean store my um indian wow. store i've been collecting for months i have all kinds of candy yeah. for that so collecting um, if anyone wants to hang out you're welcome to but we, i just want to say uh, just to be respectful of the time and for everyone do you have another question we have a winner though for the gift. Oh, the winner! Oh, yes. What's yes. the winner? Thank, for the you. Thank you. We got a, there we you got go. a winner tonight for the copy of the book and the snacks from Mia. Yes. And that will be. Rashid. That, 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 oh, we need we need the drum roll. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Rashika. <laughs> Yay. Yay! So Rashika, I will email you. And if you just uh, email back the um, address, I will get it out in the mail to you. And I hope that you use it and, and you know, you will book club on your own class you. or, you know, enjoy, enjoy this. Yeah. Snacks and book Thank and you. Happy, it was lovely. happy Santa Heritage Month. Happy back to school. Yes. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank Have you. a great evening, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. That was bye. Bye. Thank a you. great start to the fall. A great yeah. start. Thank you. <laughs> a, mo a model. Oh, you guys did a great. <laughs> so fun. Yeah. It's really more back to school now, right? Yeah. Uh huh. It's perfect. Bye, Vienna. Bye. You're really bye, bye Vienna. Up. It, it um, like yeah. it came out of nowhere i feel like oh we can stop recording now actually oh okay before we, <laughs> before we start to record everything